All right, hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm actually playing with ChatGPT. This is the GPT app on my phone. Um, and I just came across this feature. I think it's new and I really wanna share it with you because I think it could be a huge game changer. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't really explain it. I'm gonna show it to you. Um, but just really quickly, just to preface, um, I haven't been using AI very much at all. Um, in my opinion, you know, when it first came out, you know, it was really cool and novel, um, but it seemed to be making a lot of errors and it just seemed to be more work um, than it was worth. So I just kind of wrote it off. However, recently, the last month or so, I've been really getting serious about using AI tools to help me in my day-to-day -day tasks, things like composing emails, summarizing research articles, um, helping me brainstorm ideas, um, you know, that kind of thing. And ChatGPT has been really useful for that. I'm learning that if you learn how to use the AI tools well, then they can really help you. You know, if you're just messing around and putting a prompt in and hoping it's going to spit something out that's really perfect, you know, that's not, it doesn't work that well. Um, but if you use it and learn how to use it well, learn how to write different prompts in it, it can work really, really well. Uh, the other thing is, and most of you watching this are probably therapists in private practice. I am as well. I do not use ChatGPT for any clinical work. It's not writing my notes. It's not listening to sessions. There's no way. It's not HIPAA compliant. It's not secure. So I'm not using ChatGPT for anything clinical, okay? Um, I am beta testing a HIPAA compliant clinical AI tool, um, but I'm still testing. And hopefully soon that I'll make a video about that because so far the results of that are really, really cool. Um, but nonetheless, let's just get to this today. Um, so here's the chat GPT app. It's going to be really bright. There you go. Can I, let me angle it properly. Okay. Uh, I have a hard time holding things straight. So there's the app, um, right? This is what it looks like when you open it up. And traditionally what you would do, you would type in a prompt, right? So you might ask something like, you know, type out what is DBT and it will spit something out, right? Um, or can you compose an email for me um, about X, Y, Z? And you type it out and you would kind of go back and forth via text. But recently I've noticed that in the app, can you see this? There's a pair of headphones right here. All right, let me show you what happens when I click that. So it's now giving me a prompt to speak. Are you ready? Watch this. Hey, ChatGPT, I am here making a video about um, you, and I'm a therapist in private practice. I like to make videos for therapists in private practice, and so I wanted to talk a bit about what you can do. And one of the first things I'm wondering is if you could just give me five ideas for videos that people looking to start a private practice might benefit from. Absolutely. I'd be happy to help. Here are five video ideas for therapists starting a private practice. One, building your brand, creating a strong online presence. Two, navigating legal and ethical considerations in private practice. Three, effective marketing strategies for therapists, attracting your ideal clients. Four, financial planning for therapists, budgeting and setting fees. Five, self-care and avoiding burnout, strategies for sustaining a healthy practice. These topics can provide valuable insights and guidance for therapists embarking on their private practice journey. So I'm going to pause it for a second. That's incredible, right? I just gave it a prompt to give me five video ideas and it spoke to me like a person. Like that doesn't sound like a robot. Um, and I could actually go back and forth with chat GPT um, and actually start to say, oh, you know, I don't really like those ideas. Can you give me another one? And it'll talk with me. It'll dialogue with me about that. Um, let's test out one more idea. Like sometimes I'll have it compose an email. Um, let's just make one up. Let, let's say we need to... Um, you know, I'm, I'm stuck late at work and I need to write an email to a friend that says I'm going to be late, right? Maybe this is something I need to do uh, during the day. I just don't have much time to compose the email. Uh, let's go back and forth with ChatGPT a little bit about that, all right? Hey, ChatGPT, um, I have another request for you. I am currently running late for dinner reservations that I have with a close friend of mine. I'm probably going to be about 30 minutes late. Could you please compose a very brief but sincere email uh, to this friend that says I'm sorry, but I'm going to be late? Of course. Here's a brief email you can send. Subject, 
running late tonight. Hey, my name. I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to let you know that I'm running a bit behind schedule and will be about 30 minutes late for our dinner reservations tonight. I apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. Looking forward to catching up with you soon. Best, your name. Thank you so much. I really like that. It's just a little bit too formal. Could you make it a little bit more casual? Because this is uh, this is just a close friend of mine that I'm, you know, we I see regularly. Absolutely, I can make it more casual for you. Subject: Running late tonight. Hey, quick heads up. I'm running a tad behind schedule and will be about thirty minutes late for dinner tonight. Sorry about that. See you soon. Cheers. Thanks so much. That's actually pretty good. I will um, just copy and paste that into an email. You're welcome. Glad I could help. Enjoy your dinner with your friend. Thank you. So that's a good example right there where I have it do like a task for me. It wrote out the email. Um, and I was able to dialogue with it, right? I didn't love the first one that it came back with. So I just spoke with ChatGPT and said to redo it um, in a different way. And they were able to do it, which is totally amazing, right? Like um, now the cool part is the fact that you can do this with your phone, I could be doing something else and just talking to ChatGPT, right? So I could be working on one thing and just talking about the email I want composed, right? And you might say, well, Matt, well, what do I, like, where's the email? It, do I just remember it? Here's the other amazing thing. I'm going to pause this and the entire conversation that we just had, let's see, get you to see this real quick. Um, hold on. There we go. Yeah. It's, my screen is so bright because I have a light on it. Uh, but hold on one sec. If I get it a little bit further, hold on one sec. Make it brighter. Does that work? All right. I can't, it's not showing up, but the entire, you have to just trust me here. The, yeah, you can kind of see it. The entire transcription is in there. Um, so everything we spoke about, there we go. There's the entire transcription. So you can just literally copy and paste it and it will actually show up on the desktop version or the web browser version. So I can be talking to it on my phone and then it will also be on my web browser version, which is just incredible. Now this just opens so many possibilities. You could and, you know, you can ask it to give you ideas about anything. Um, you can ask it to compose emails. You can go back and forth with it. You can brainstorm with a chat GPT. Um, you know, if you're knowledgeable about a particular topic and you just need like a refresher, you know, I, why don't we try that? You know, like I'm really knowledgeable about DBT. I do a lot of DBT in my practice. Um, let's just ask chat GPT a couple questions about uh, DBT. And the reason why it's important to be somewhat knowledgeable about what you're asking ChatGPT is because it can it can mess things up and give you the wrong information. So you know if you're totally oblivious to a particular topic, you know ChatGPT could be a good starting point, but I wouldn't trust it entirely. But because I know about DBT pretty well, I'll be able to tell whether or not ChatGPT is giving me the runaround or giving something accurate. Um, but let's just say I want to kind of you know I know how to define distress tolerance pretty well. But let's say I want to a different, um, a different way of, of talking about distress tolerance. Maybe let's see if ChatGPT can do that. All right, so we're gonna go back to our headphones. Hey, ChatGPT, I'm a therapist in private practice. I do DBT with people, I have DBT training, um, and I wanted to provide an easy to understand definition about uh, what distress tolerance is from a DBT standpoint. Can you help me out with that? Absolutely. Distress tolerance in dialectical behavior therapy, DBT, refers to the ability to withstand and cope with emotional distress in healthy and effective ways without resorting to harmful behaviors. It involves learning skills to tolerate distressing emotions without making the situation worse. Yeah, thanks so much. That's actually a, a pretty accurate definition. Can you make that just a little bit shorter and easier to understand for someone who perhaps has never been in therapy before? Sure thing. Distress tolerance in DBT means learning to handle tough emotions without making things worse by using harmful behaviors. Thank you. That's a pretty good starting point. I'll tweak that a little bit. You're welcome. Feel free to adjust it to fit your needs. 
So that definition of distress tolerance is pretty good. Um, and you can see there, I asked, you know, uh, to give me a definition. And then the first, you know, the first one was pretty good, but I wanted it to be even easier to understand for someone who had never been in therapy before. And they were able to do it. And the second one was also pretty good. So you can see, I might not use that exactly, but it's helping me generate ideas. It's helping me think. Um, and again, you can have this pulled up on your phone and just talk to it as you do other things. Maybe I'm writing a blog post. Maybe I'm writing an email to a client, um, whatever it might be. Um, ChatGPT can help. Um, and I think this hands-free feature, being able to talk to it, um, really does open up a lot of doors. So I don't know, uh, how would you use this feature in your practice or in your daily life to make things easier for you? Um, sorry, people are sawing buildings out there. Um, I'm always distracted by the sounds. Anyway, how would you use ChatGPT? I would love to know, especially this feature. Uh, put it down below in the comments. Uh, but anyway, I hope this video is helpful for you. I hope you learn something. At the very least, I hope you're inspired to really thrive in private practice.